Hi everybody, welcome to Side Dish. Um, we're gonna continue on. I'm Doug Bookie, as always. Amy is with me behind the camera today. We're uh, doing a little uh, green bean casserole for our Thanksgiving series, um, but we're making it fresh. So that means fresh green beans. We're gonna make our own onion, fried onions, and our own mushroom sauce. So that's what you got to look forward to. This recipe was provided by uh, one of our viewers, Scott Shearing. Um, graciously said that his family uses this recipe and sent it over. He actually made the whole thing and then sent it over. I actually think I have pictures of it somewhere as where it's supposed to look, but we're gonna use the recipe. And so I wanna thank Scott for sending this over. It's really gonna um, be a treat to jazz up the green bean casserole, which already is delicious. So um, if we can make something that's delicious, even more delicious, we're doing the right thing. I hope everybody's doing all right this week. Lots going on as we move into the end of November or end of October, and Halloween is coming up. So you know, trick or treat out there in the world. Um, so basically, this is going to happen in three steps, and then it's all going to come together. First, we're going to fry the make the fried onions, make the mushroom cream sauce, and then we're going to um, get the uh, green beans going. We need to blanch them. And then we're gonna cut the ends off and that because we don't want, you know, some of them have these stems on there. So we need to trim them off. So we're just gonna do that and look what they're gonna do and probably cut them in half. These don't are- Don't we have to pull those strings out of them? Not if you take these off. Or is that peas? Oh, that's peas. Ah. Yeah. Uh, but I, you can cut, cut this and then we'll cut them in half so that they're, you know, the right size. So, uh, so we're gonna do that first. So what we wanna do, uh, is starting is we're going to take an onion. We need to take an onion and um, the instructions say one large softball sized uh, yellow onion. That is very specific size. Yeah. So um, I think it's, we're, you know, part of it is we are going to chop it in half. So that is not that other one because that other one is baseball size. Yes. So I'll show you, the, you know, basically softball, baseball. Uh, that's the small, really the smallest onion I could find, but we're gonna need that to when we're cooking up the uh, mushroom cream, the mushroom cream sauce to add some flavor to it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get, go ahead and just get into this because we've got a lot to do. Um, is we're going to take this onion and we're gonna peel it and get this brown skin off of there. It's so gross. I don't have a trick for this. I mean, I could take this layer off, but we'd be losing a lot of onions. So right on cue, the dogs are going crazy. Of course they are. <laughs> anyway. I do sometimes take that outer layer off because sometimes it's tough. It is. This is, doesn't look like it. It looks like, whoa. This whoa, is really, get out of the kitchen. A lot going on in here. The dogs are going a little bit crazy right now. Um, we have, if, I think we've mentioned this, if we haven't, we have two dogs and four cats. So um, we have hair everywhere. Oh my God, it's always in my <laughs> mouth and it is gross. This one I'm gonna take off because it looks like this, this side is a little thinner. The other side was a little thicker. Um, it is also going to sliced thin. So we're just gonna keep it just like, I mean that thin. So I got this, I got this bowl. I'm gonna throw them in there. Um, I think I just saw a hair fly by. You probably did. <laughs> I mean, we eat a lot of hair in here. I swear I had cat hair in my mouth the whole day yesterday. And now with masks, oh, I get to work and there's a cat hair in my mask. It makes me crazy all yeah. day. It goes right in your mouth. It's just never great. Um, I hope everybody's wearing their mask. Um, you know, safety for others and yourself. Um, Safety first. Sort of the new new take, world. We take care of your. Hey, okay, we're gonna finish cutting this onion. Uh, the camera cut out there, so um, I'll fix it in post. Uh, you'll never <laughs> even know. So I'll do a star wipe or something like that, and it'll come back. So again, I'm just I want to get this as thin as we're gonna go. Um, and you leave that little hairy root in so you've got something to hold on to? Not only that, but that's actually not going to be good. But the root, this is what I heard, the root, 
like a horse running around in here. <laughs> uh, the root has, that's where, like, if I don't cut into the root, I don't get the cries. I don't get, oh, so okay. it seems to work. I learned that for watching Gordon Ramsay cut onions, and he said he could do that. And so oh, okay. He seems pretty successful, so maybe we'll see what he has. He probably knows what he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I like that guy. So we're just, you know, you, you know, thin. Use your best judgment. If you've got some thicker ones, it's cool. Uh, a sharp knife helps with this. So if you've got a honing blade or honing uh, rod or a sh knife sharpener, I would sharpen the knife before this. This knife I keep pretty sharp, so. Or if you have a mandolin or that, a slicer. That would work too. All right, so I'm going to throw these in there. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because we're going to toss them with salt. Um, and that's gonna let some of the liquid come out of it. And it's also gonna help soften the flavor. So, I need both of these out. Um, it just says, uh, well, Toss with salt. It doesn't give me any other instructions <laughs> with that. So okay. I'm just gonna maybe. That seems good. About that. And then again. And then do they have to sit for a while or something? Five, five minutes. Oh, okay. So. All right. We'll get these. Break them up a little bit too, because again, this is the next. One of the things we're gonna do is dredge these in flour. Yeah. And and seasoning and then they're gonna go into it actually we're gonna make it like a batter sort of like what we did with onion rings a little bit but instead of having full rings and thicker slices like we did with the onion rings these are gonna be thinner so it'll come together and we're gonna do that so we'll let these sit for five minutes and then once we've got them sitting uh, we will uh, we'll move on to the next step is there anything we can do in between not right now okay. here is like they have given off, I don't know if you can see they it. They look really wet. Yeah, there's a lot of liquid coming out of there. That's gonna soften the taste and that's the, that's the salt at work there. Anytime you're gonna, you know. Oh, that wasn't really that impressive. Well. I thought it was gonna be better than that. I was like, it's like drip, drip, drip. trapped inside of here. So it's like. Are you supposed to like? Put them on a paper towel or a kitchen towel or Doesn't something? Doesn't say to so. Dry them out? Nope. It says toss with salt and let them sit for five minutes and then throw two cups of milk in there. Huh. Okay. And because it's just, it's just, you're, you know, you're not, it's not going to all, all that liquid and everything is not going to go gotcha. out. It's, you know, we're going to be grabbing the onion. So I'm just going to use the same bowl. The thing is that's good about this is that we are, um, we're saving bowls. And also the salt that's in here will help continue to um, season the french fries, or not french fries, the onions. Oh my goodness. Um, just sort of giving this a little. Two cups of milk? Two cups of whole milk. Um, I think that makes things a lot easier in terms of, uh, you got fat content, but it's not cream. So it's not gonna be super heavy. We are going to, um, you could probably use other milk, but I use whole milk for pretty much anything. Um, so now we need our flour mixture, which is three cups of flour. We need onion powder, which is one tablespoon. This, I don't know why I put that thing back on there, but. Oh, really pours out of there. Yeah. There's one of that. We have, so that's onion powder and we have uh, gar uh, garlic powder, one tablespoon as, as well. Um, but given the volume of uh, flour, it's not, I mean, that's not that much. And then um, one tablespoon of white pepper. That's a lot. Yeah, it is. It's what, but it's again, you wanna. I hope we have that much. Yeah, we do. Come on, we're right up. Perfect. And then um, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use a whisk so I don't get my delicate fingers. But <laughs> right. Also, actually, best whisk ever. It is the best whisk. 
You love this wish. You made lots of notes about it on Saturday. <laughs> so. All right, so that's it. So we've got these, they're in the salt. We're gonna go ahead and soak these for a second and actually in small batches, um, we're going to... That does not look very appetizing. It doesn't, but it is. It's gonna be delish. Yeah. Um, anything that's, you know, I probably should get a spoon so I can, or at least something to go. I don't want to, I don't want to get... I might use the, the fish spatula. Ooh, that's not a bad idea. The fish spatula. I don't know. Is we use it for fish? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a I, spatula. First of all, first of all, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> I don't know what I thought you meant. I was like, is she trying to think about the spider? Because I don't think that's correct. But no, that would oh, be... I was thinking about, yeah, that guy. That's oh, good. he's not really... Well, he's good for that. But he might not be good for that part. But this is actually not bad. So Maybe you need a spider. So see what we got here? Oh, that's good coating. Yeah. So it's not thick, but it's still on there. And that's what you get for the, the onion, the going into the with the water and then the milk is growing up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dredge all of these in here and then I'm gonna put them on a wire rack and we're gonna let it rest for five minutes. So I'm gonna do that and uh, get yourself a drink and you know. Why do you let them rest for five minutes? What I think to about? soak up some of the, the, sh the outer thing. Oh, okay. This isn't my recipe. Scott, if you put in the comments why we do <laughs> why we let it rest for five minutes, that would be super helpful for, for the viewership. Um, then we will then we will be able to answer that question that's the beauty of having recipes sent in by you the viewer so if you've got other recipes out there that you want to see us uh do that is a favorite side dish or it's a regional side dish or something your grandma used to make but you don't make anymore and you can think about it send it to side dish cooking at gmail.com and we will try and feature it on one of our episodes as we're moving forward um i feel like this show is about you is as much as it's about us. So you guys are doing awesome and like keeping our motivation up. So if you've got recipes that you want us to, to attempt, get us the recipe as best you remember it or what your mom remembers. If you could talk to your grandma, that'd be even better. So I'm gonna run through the rest of these onions. I'm gonna get them, uh, the rest of them powdered onto the sheet. And while I'm doing that, uh, we'll, be, we'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, I wanted to show you this last, uh, I got the spider out because, you know, the, we were trying to dredge here and we realized, Amy realized that this is probably a better tool for it. Um, but this is what it looks like. It's pretty cool. They look like worms, Amy commented. <laughs> and so um, I'm gonna, it's been, it's taken me about five minutes from the time I started to the time we got now. I'm gonna dip this down in so we can see the tray. Yeah. So that's what you're looking at. That looks pretty damn good if you ask me. Now, I've been, this whole time behind me, I've had, you probably noticed the, I'm just making sure I got everything out of here. I don't want to lose any of these little bits that are probably going to be delicious. Um, I've had the oil going, vegetable oil, set it to 350. Well, not set it to 350, get it to 350. <laughs> and then um, that's what you're going to, we're going to get it up to. So this is sitting a little bit more than that. It's like 360, which is actually good because as we start dropping these in there, um, we're going to... The temperature drops. The temperature is definitely going to drop. So again, same thing we've done with anything we've fried here. Small batches and then you're going to, we're going to go through that and fry it up. So we're going to, we're going to, start this and then I'll start this and we'll take some footage of it actually going in and you can see when it comes out what it looks like because it's probably going to happen pretty fast since these are you know not big and thick. Are you going to put it on a like a paper towel or are you going to put it back on that rack? I probably well yeah let's have less dishes. But where am I going to if I'm putting Scooch these? Them. Okay 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 um okay. And you need your spider again yeah? Yeah, which I've got over there. All right, so I'm gonna start these and then uh, I'm gonna change angles so you can see what's going on. Okay, cool. See you over there. See you over there. Now it's time for crispy onions. Let's see how this looks. 
You're going to put them in with your hand, not with the spider? And Yeah, because I'm going to spread them out as I do it. Oh, I get scared of that, so... Yeah. Oh, that's a great sound. I can already tell this is a great idea. <laughs> oh, I'm wiggling my like camera. That's okay. Everybody. It's like three minutes for the batches. Um, How far did the oil drop down? Actually, it's pretty maintaining pretty good. Remember, we're going three minutes because these are the crispy. These are crispy, and yeah. they're, like they're gonna they're gonna be good. So I'm actually going to do this. So yeah, that, place to put them. Yeah. You know, work smarter, not harder, everybody. Oh, it makes sense. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like um like shoestring potatoes, only shoestring onions. Yeah. I feel like this you could put this on a sandwich, a burger. Oh these yeah. would all be really good ideas. Um oh man. Do you salt them when they come out or no they they have enough salt? They were salted. I don't think I would necessarily salt them. Also remember we're gonna they're gonna be part of something. Yeah. So I would also make sure that we're uh you know you're ma maintaining that because they're gonna be seasoned as they go into stuff and But if you're just gonna put them on like a burger You might salt them a little bit. Make test ones. Yeah. Gotcha. So just keep watching it. If you don't have if you don't go the full three minutes, I mean this is I really am curious to know, like, if this is worth it or if the Frenches are just, like, as good. We'll see. I'm, I'm, I'm excited I'm, for the, for tasting. Yeah. What do you think? Look at those. Those are beautiful. All right. Maybe a little longer? No, no. Yeah. I don't know. I'm don't trying know. to think of what the... I don't know. What it, like, I just tried to guess what three minutes was, but I never looked at a clock when we started. So, okay. you know. It's kind of how we roll around here. It's yeah. Cool. Yeah, that looks good. I like that. that yeah, that's good. a good okay. color. Ooh, and we crazy. I know. Do yourself a favor. Get a lot of the oil off here. Okay, and then they're just gonna sit over there, and you're gonna put the next batch in. Yep, we'll start this, and then and I'm gonna I'm gonna run through these, and we'll go on to the next step. Cool. You clearly have determined that you can put more in this time. Yes. I think that because they're so thin and they're as soon as they hit the oil, they're sort of crisping up. The other thing too is... And because they're so thin, are they really, they're not really making the temperature. Like that's a lot more than you did last time. Did it make the temperature it did a lot more? Only about five or so degrees. Okay, so. So. Save a lot of time. I, I upped the heat on it too to compensate. So it will, you know, I can see the temperature going down. So I'm, I'm just compensating to let it go back up a little bit and then but you know again we've done this in the past so just move it around to let the oil kind of get on everything and now I'm leaving it alone and we got a, we got two or three more batches of this and then we'll 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 move on to this will be done and then we can move on to the mushroom sauce okay sounds good Ooh, yeah look at that that's the results right there we uh we went ahead and off camera tasted these <laughs> but Delicious. if you're making a hamburger yeah i would put those on there or i would even have them as a side these are just as good as any onion ring i've ever had yeah they're delicious so we're going to set this to the side we now we're going to use those later now we're going to make the um the mushroom cream sauce which the first thing we need one small onion well let me move this these are oyster mushrooms over here that are that are sliced uh, I got four ounces of those and then 10 uh, or 20 ounces of these white mushroom slices. I just went with uh, the mostly the white um, just because for flavor wise they're, they're going to taste like mushrooms but I wanted to add a little variety of mushroom flavor. These got a little earthier or woodier, not woodier, but they've they're got a little different flavor. 24 ounces of mushrooms. You need one small onion, which is what we got here. Two tablespoons of butter four cloves of garlic, around six sprigs of fresh thyme, uh, one cup of white wine, 
one cup of chicken broth or vegetable broth, one and a third cup of heavy cream, two tablespoons of, cor of uh, cornstarch. Here's a little uh, thing I thought was interesting. One teaspoon of soy sauce. Oh yeah, umami. A little, a little umami. I bet you could also probably substitute Worcestershire sauce. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, salt and pepper to taste, and then uh, two tablespoons of water. You're just using the tablespoons of water the, to mix with the, the, the cornstarch starch to make a slurry. Um, so we're gonna saute these onions up, and then um, it, I don't think you, you just need to um, just some, you know not a super fine dice. That we're not looking for that. We're just gonna get these into a, a, a medium dice and then um, transfer them to a saucepan. And that's where stuff is gonna come together. So I'm going to take the outer shell off of this, like we, a shell, <laughs> <laughs> outer skin. And um, onions are so funny. I've said it before, they're like odors, they have layers. You're gonna get sued. I'm not gonna get sued. It's a <laughs> homage to my, to our friend Shrek the Ogre. You know, just because he said it doesn't mean I can't say it. It's not like he copyrighted that. Um, I wish they had a better tool. <laughs> for, for this the, activity? For this activity. <laughs> I spend a lot of time de-skinning onions. And that sounds a lot more ominous than it is. Flaying them? Sure, flaying them is an accurate uh, term as well. Just let the dogs in from outside so we're busting in like crazy. And You should probably not leave these onions close to me. Uh, onions close to you, huh? Yeah, they're yeah. good. Just try not to eat all of them before we get them into the mix. Well, Okay. They're definitely not for dogs. Go away. Oh yeah, the dogs think, oh, what do you got there? Something real good? All of a sudden I've got the uh, sniffles. I can't decide what it is. That's really, I mean, just a medium. That was pretty, that was pretty simple. <clears throat> Hey, do you guys see they're making a new, uh, they're reviving Saved by the Bell? Oh. Apparently, Zach Morris is governor of California. <laughs> and A.C. Slater is the gym teacher at oh. Bayside High. No sign of screech, though. So, uh -oh. or Mr. Belding, at least in the preview I saw. Wait, is it, are they still alive? I don't know, maybe Mr. Belding died. Mr. Belding died. died. He might have died. But Screech is alive. He had a, he had a run in with the, the police, I think. So, <laughs> probably why he's not in it. I'm doing uh, two tablespoons of butter. So, I think that's what it says. Yep. Same, same, same thing we always do with butter. We'll get the cloves of garlic going too, because I want to, we need uh, four cloves and we're going to just, again, it doesn't need to be like super fine, but because it's going to go into this mix and it's going to soften and be pretty good. If you've got giant cloves like this, maybe only do three. So I would imagine that nobody's saying do four giant cloves of garlic. Um, the skinning. A little crush, get the Allison going, and uh... Ah, this is straight up, he is not returning. Yeah. I'm betting they had, you know, like I said, he had some trouble with the law. I believe he may have uh, been involved in some unsavory business. Huh. But I can't remember. He might even be in jail, who knows? Dustin Diamond. Look him up. I am looking him up. Oh. Oh, carrying a concealed weapon in disorderly conduct oh. in 2015. Disorderly conduct? That could be anything. Though. He was released after four months and then he was arrested again. That's... He's, he's making some poor choices. Yeah. Old Screech. What would Mr. Belding think? 
Well, not that he's, you know, he's dead, so. Did you watch Saved by the Bell? When I was a kid. Huh. Why? I didn't. It was one of the only things it when... It seems like it w it's to... It wasn't our era. It was? Yeah. Oh. I mean, I might have been a little older, but I don't think it was... I mean, they started... Saved by the Bell started as a middle school show. And then they, with Haley Mills of, uh, I I never got of into the Parent it. Trap fame, is their main teacher. And then they grad, then they went up to high school. But there's a series, you should look it up. There's a series on YouTube called Zach Morris is a Douche. And it, about all of the things that Zach Morris did that was kind of questionable. And so, um, and it, it's narrated and it's like, here he is asking a girl out only to make somebody else jealous and then making her feel bad about it or something like that. And then you go back and I'm like, I never noticed that before. And you're like, well, there it is. That's crazy. Yeah, it was totally our era. 89 yeah. to 93. I know. Huh. It would I have been like when it. we were in high school and stuff, but about high school students. That's interesting. Plus, you know, they played a lot of reruns of it. So it was like, I think it was on TBS and TNT and, or, you know, Di I don't think it was on Disney. I don't know where it originally aired, but it was, it was all over the place, if I remember. And I grew up in Alaska, so you got to remember everything was 20 years behind <laughs> what we have now. So the fact that you probably, you know, it was a contemporary for you in the, at the time, but for me, I probably discovered it when I was in my 20s. So <laughs> and I was like, this show is awesome. Actually, the, I think about it more, and this is not a rant about how crappy Saved by the Bell was, but I I think about it now, and I'm like, this show wasn't really all that funny. And it wasn't like, and then Zach Morris had time-stopping powers? Why wasn't that ever, like... Did like, it deal with, like, um, things that kids are dealing with? I mean, was it like... Um, Jesse Spano had a caffeine pill addiction. Oh, see? Okay. That, mm, I don't know. I think that's that's... <laughs> That's a bit. That's stretching it? It's a bit of a stretch. So I'm just adding the onions now, as per the use. Um, and these are gonna just still they soften a little bit, five to three to five minutes. And then we'll add, add the um, thyme and the uh, garlic at the same time. And then we're, it's only a minute there. Um, a note about the thyme. You want to take it off the Woody Sprigs. Woody Sprigs, that sounds like a folk singer from the 60s. <laughs> Except on the stage is Woody, Woody Sprigs. Sprigs. Maybe I should make that an alias. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Woody Sprigs is actually, I'm gonna, that's making me chuckle too much because that's so funny. <laughs> I don't know what that, that's about. That's pretty funny. Anyways, um, does anybody out there have really good aliases that they would use if they had to go off the They're grid? They're not going to tell you. They should. <laughs> I want to know. I'm you not want something tell you. inconspicuous, but also memorable, just in case they're like you're arrested at using the alias. Like, uh, what was that? Uh, what was that politician and his his uh, his alias that he used to troll online was like Carlos Danger. <laughs> <laughs> Carlos. Oh. That was, was it, Anthony Weiner? I think that's who it was. Oh, First geez. of all, he already had a name yeah, that sounded so like an alias, <laughs> and he went with Carlos Danger. I mean, who is he? A, what is he? A spy from the uh, Hispanic, <laughs> uh, Latino spy from the '60s? I mean, Carlos Danger. What's uh, Spanish for danger? Pelig what is it? <laughs> I can't remember. But anyways, that would be even better. That would have been better. No, uh, what would have been better if it was like danger in uh, not Spanish, but like yeah, French or yeah. something. Carlos Danger. What a that's ridiculous. I mean, but if your name, if your given name is Anthony Weiner, I suppose oh, it's not that exciting. No. Le Danger. Le Danger. <laughs> oh, risque. Oh yeah, Carlos Risque. That'd be pretty funny. I would think. Like I would like. I just want to have an alias that, like, if I ever had to go on the lam and the FBI was after me and they were like, he could be using the name Woody Spriggs. <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, I'm not going to chop these. Actually, I'm going to just rough. 
all I'm really doing with that is releasing some of the oils that are in the in the herbs. But with the um, with the oil, that's gonna ha happen anyways. Let's get a spoon. What? I always grab this one. No, it's bent to edge. No, it's bent. <laughs> I know, why do you like that little spoon? I don't know. I, I, there's another one that's approximately... You should go to the other side when you do that, so we're not... Looking at my back? Yeah, yeah there you go. Um, I don't know, there's one that's approximately the same size in the spoon holder. Why don't you like the food pushers? I like those better. Well, I don't know. I just, I like what I like, and it's the spoon is working fine. So the reason why we don't do these too long, more than three to five minutes, is these are already soft. They're gonna soften. When we're just cooking the bitter, not the bitterness, but the rawness out, rawness out of them, and then when it goes in with the, everything else, then it's going to, um, it's gonna help. So, all right. And we so, don't want the garlic to burn. That's why we don't yeah, put it in right one, away. Only one minute, and it's really just gonna go. So, um, I'm just gonna combine those two together. Maybe just. Let's go. I'm gonna rough chop through here. Mostly just because I like wiping my fingers off and it smells like garlic and thyme for the rest of the evening. I do need to get uh, the chick our chicken homemade chicken broth that we made uh, that I've been using because we do need some of that. This is a master. It's sort of not all chicken broth. It's mostly chicken broth. It's like <laughs> turkey wings, turkey uh, or. Turkey it's wings. Poultry broth. Yeah, but it also had a little, little pro tip here. It's uh, it's from Bon Appetit, but it's um, it's got ham hock in there, give a little smokiness. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> um, all right. I think I feel that's about three minutes, don't you think? Yes. All right, I feel comfortable with that. They're starting to soften up. They become a little bit soft and translucent. Okay, let's and see. You know, so now we're going to add in the garlic. Oh, man. And that thyme. And I'm going to tell you, just like I've said in the past, get ready for, it's going to be, it's going to be smell city coming up here real soon. Population, you guys. So, <laughs> we're going <laughs> to... I, I, I got a little sass of me tonight. I don't you know do. What it is, but, uh, this, I'm, and I've got this on a medium heat. I don't want it to be, you know, I don't want it to get too hot. Oh, yeah. This is, oh. Like, I think if you can find a good recipe that you, you somebody can vouch for you, that they've cooked it, that it's good, and it's, it's a, it's, a homemade version of a, of a staple. You should give it a try at least once. That's my thing. I mean, I, I these these shoestring onion rings basically are delicious. And I would have never done that if I hadn't decided to make this recipe in itself. So, um, we got a minute. So we're gonna add the mushrooms and the salt and pepper. And then the mushrooms are gonna uh, release their liquid. And then once they've done that, uh, Oh, I was supposed to add the garlic later. I skipped a step. It's fine. Once we add these in there, it's not gonna, we're not cooking on super high heat, so it's not like it's gonna burn. Um, What's happening there? I don't know. Some packages are These working. packages are the worst. I was gonna help you, but I can't reach I it. I know, that's fine. Oh wait, I already have scissors up. Uh, are you gonna cut those for or just the slices is good? The slices are good because it's, I mean, really this, it's when it, they're gonna, they're gonna shrink down. Okay. This is. Don't, Just go don't, underneath the thing here. Yeah, do not trust the, the Ziploc opener here. If you wanted to go super fancy with this mushroom sauce, like if you were gonna use it as like a, the main vessel, which I mean kind of is, you could get fancy mushrooms. Or you can get that, does oh, Costco yeah. still have the dehydrated I I and know. then I, you rehydrate and those are good. They're really good. You can also use the broth. It's really good. So. Move to the other side, please. This is why you're here. You're good, good <laughs> camera direction this evening. So I'm just adding these in. Just this evening. <laughs> Last time you were a shit show. Well, <laughs> you had a friend over in the afternoon. And <laughs> there was bottles of wine involved. It's fine. You know, we just, we made it through. Again, this is going to seem 
like you're like that is too too many mushrooms but they're going to release liquid they're going to shrink down um i want to again get these on some heat and kind of be stirring these so that they're um they're coming together here so this is really something let's talk about this because this is, it's got some work to do but you want to I would prepare this stuff like the day before for Thanksgiving or even even a couple of days before. Like do the do the do Not the onions. Those. I don't those won't say crispy. I wouldn't do them the day. You could do them the day before, I think. I, I mean, think you'd definitely do the sauce early. Yeah, do the sauce like a couple of days. Put prep it in your a, green beans. Put it yeah. Um let's do while that's doing that, let's prep some green beans. Oh, where's my carrots? So um I'm gonna take I'm gonna go at an angle because you know what makes French green bean, French cut green beans, French cut? They're cut on an angle. They're also cut down the middle. They're cut down the middle. Yeah, we're, we're not, not doing that though. Yeah. We're just cutting at an angle. Yeah, and then I'm cutting that. I don't like that end either. Um, and then are your worms gonna eat that? Well, that is the question. I'm gonna check to see if the worms can eat that. Here, let me so, Google that for you. Let me Google that for you. You ever use that? That's a that's like the ultimate passive aggressive thing. It's, <laughs> if you if you ever worked in a technology and somebody is like, "How do I do this?" and you're like, "I've had people like when I first started, they were like, let me, when Google was first going, they're like, let me Google that for you.'" And I'm like, "Thanks." Yep. Well, then they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna feast up. I've got a lot to give them that's frozen. Um, if you cut them and they're about that length. I mean, you can cut them in half again. It's like bite get, size. Get them in the can. Like when you get them in the can, that's what they look like. I mean, uh, are you seriously gonna do this one at a time? You're gonna be at this forever. Yeah, it's uh, I know, 32 ounces <laughs> of green beans. It seems like there a lot. Be a quicker way. There has to be a better <laughs> way. Um, so get some friends. Get a bunch of knives. You know. Again, scissors. Oh, that's actually a good idea. You probably, oh, Amy comes through and is a genius. Is there ever any doubt? No, there isn't, but look at that. We could just snip, snip. Like, you know how people always snip. want to help with Thanksgiving dinner? This is a great job for them. Yeah, I don't want anybody helping me with Thanksgiving dinner, but this would be a job that I would buy, give somebody if I hadn't done it like the day before and had them cool, chilled in the, in the refrigerator. But um, yeah, I don't really. I I kind of a I'm kind of a, a ball hog when it comes to yeah, uh, Thanksgiving. Are. <laughs> but it, it's fine. I like I like to make sure part of the joy of doing Thanksgiving, which we know we're having a smaller, like much smaller get together, is that I thought the dogs had something that was Velcro. No, it's a toy. No, oh. and. Um, but they've now destroyed them. The cheese? Yep. Hmm. Um, you know, this is a good job for somebody else to do. If it's tedious and there's a lot of it. And the nice part about it though, is we have this time together while the, the mushrooms are doing it. So to be honest with you, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna let these cook down. We're going to do the, chop the rest of these into, and then we're gonna, then it's all gonna start coming together pretty quickly. Um, cause we do have to blanch, do we have to blanch some of this? Let me see. Hold please. Yeah. So I, well, I'll also get some water boiling at the same time and we'll be good to go. So, uh, we're going to do all that and then we're going to see what it looks like. All right. Well, well we've released, we released lots of liquid. Mm -hmm. See that's reduced. That's what I'm talk, talking about there. So now we're going to add more liquid but flavorful liquid. Um, we're adding one cup of nice, delicious white wine. Uh, this is F. Stephen Millier, and um, it's really good. Uh, we get it through Naked Wines, right? Mm -hmm. Naked Wines is a great service. Um, they don't pay us to say this, but it's a great service. It's a subscription, but we've been part members for years now, and it's a really, they have really great wine. So, and if you don't like something, you can send it back. How many cups? One cup. Is that one cup? This is a one cupper. Yep, that's one cup. Are you sure? 
Um, it clearly, yeah, one cup. Okay. <laughs> it looks like a lot because it's it's narrow. Got ya. Oh yeah, a little smokiness to it. It's gonna be so good in this. So sometimes, if I don't have any stock made for the Thanksgiving season, the week before or so, I will make this, and so I'll have it. I think what I made almost four gallons last year, and I used almost all of it. We had some left over, but it was a lot. So add both. Um, I'm going to give this a quick stir just to kind of uh, let everything mingle. While um, we were getting stuff ready, we got a, a container of water that's going to be boiling here. And then th we're, that's because the green beans are going to be blanched. And we'll talk about blanching when we get to that. But um, this is going to get to, you want the temperature up. We want to reduce the liquid in here by half. It looks like a lot now, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to boil away pretty quickly. If you're worried about the alcohol that is in the wine, that is going to boil off. So we don't have to really worry about that as we get as we get moving. So yes, you look like you'd like to say something. No. Nope. Oh. <laughs> All right. So um, we're gonna let that boil down. We're gonna hopefully get this to a boil, um, and then keep cutting those green beans. And we're gonna keep cutting the green beans. So we'll just keep going, and then uh, once I'm finished with the green beans, hopefully uh, this will be reduced by half. And if not, I'll be here till Jack comes down from the beanstalk. So. <laughs> All right. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Um, so I'm just making the cornstarch slurry, two uh, tablespoons of um, cornstarch, and I believe it's also two tablespoons of wa cold water, cold water. If you're like me and you can't get cold water out of your sink, add some ice to it and add it in there. The cold water is just better, it activates it and more effectively. Don't be a... There we go. And then, all right, I have, I, have the, the, I have a tiny tool for this. <laughs> a tiny whisk. Tiny whisk. <laughs> it's going to, this is, all this is, we're making a thickener, right? You could probably do this with, you could do this with flour, but this is more effective. And. Or Wondra. Some people use Wondra. That is true. I don't know. What is Wondra? It's basically like cornstarch. Oh. Well, that's what this is. But they keep it in the fridge. Well, at least the person that I know that uses it keeps it in the fridge. And I never really understood. All right, so we did that. Here's a little fun fact about cornstarch, if you didn't know this. It's a non-Newtonian liquid. What is a non-Newtonian liquid? Fluid. Amy? Oh, I'm sorry. Non-Newtonian fluid. What is that? Well, cornstarch isn't, but when you mix it with water, it yes. becomes a non-Newtonian fluid. Right. If you have the right mixture, when you hit it, it's solid. solid but if you you know I pour know. it then it pours like a liquid right i don't have a um you can run across the top of it and you won't sink in but if you walked you look would up, yeah the wonderful place that you're watching this video youtube has a ton of videos about non-newtonian liquids and they're pretty cool fluids sorry fluid 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 <laughs> fluid non-newtonian fluid um oh black if you made oobleck as a kid, or if you make yeah. it with your kids. Yeah. 32 ounces of green beans. Give or take. We got right. tired. We got tired. But also, this is the amount of cutting that we did. So yeah. there were both packages that I bought were one pound, four ounces. We estimate that's about right. Um, I've also reduced the liquid by half. It's quite a bit. I'm now going to get rid of that water because I no longer need it. And I need one cup of heavy, of heavy cream. One and a third. And we're adding that to that. Oh yeah, and one third. So, oh, I really can't see. That's why you need the ones that have... Uh, the bumps? That are etched, not yeah. printed. Well, I've had this measuring cup for a, belly, a billion years. It's been in the dishwasher a few times, so you can't really see any of the numbers anymore. So that's a quarter. I see what we're doing here. <laughs> One third. 
It's over there. Uh, that looks like a half, but okay. It's not. I know what you're thinking. It's not. Get this mixed in. What we did there is we just like concentrated all that broth flavor, all the wine, like down flavor, and the liquid that the mushrooms release also is just ripe with flavor. So give it a good stir. Um, did it darken up? It is darkening up a little bit. So that's why I'm, I'm giving it a stir. It's not like um, super dark, but it looks like, it'll look like mushroom cream sauce. So when we're done, I mean, I think it looks pretty good. It did, I mean, it did a little bit. If you can see that. I yes. don't want to pour it on the counter. Okay. So. Yeah, don't do that. So we're going to let that, um, we're. When does the thickener come in? Well, point? that's what it comes in now. That's what I was just checking in the old recipe. Um, so this was going to, when this activates, it activates with heat. And then, then it's going to cause it to thicken. So, give it a good pour here. God, I'm so camera that tonight. So, listen, I need some sort of countertop cookery. So, <laughs> if you feel like, you know, doing that, you let me know. And I will gladly take that gift from somebody. Countertop cookery. Yeah, so I don't have to keep turning my back toward you. I don't want to, that's extra cream there. I didn't want to really waste that. Um, I'm gonna, I got the heat turned down a little bit. I'm going to turn it back up and let it come to a little boil and then I'm going to turn it down again. And this is going to, and then this will thicken. Again, it needs to come up to a boil and then we'll turn it down and we will let it thicken as it does its thing. So we'll let that happen. At the same time, I got water on. I did add salt to it when, right before it started to boil so it's, and for the blanching. And um, I'm actually going to do that while we wait. Um, so these need to be about five to seven minutes. Why do you have two pots over there? Well, I thought, I, I thought the cream sauce was going to be maybe a little much for this. Uh, and I thought maybe I would put it in there and it never came together. And you know, we're, I'm an amateur here. So I was like, I can clean it up and I know, I know. Okay. Uh, I was just wondering what was happening. Um, the recipe says five to seven minutes. Five minutes will be on the toothy side, so you get a little bit of a crunch on it. Um, well, it says it will still have some tooth after baking. So oh. if you like to have a little bit of texture, go five minutes on the blanch. If you want it to be a little softer, go seven. What do you think? Well, since I'm used to making this with canned green beans, they don't have any tooth when all said and done. Right. So. I guess if you're trying to make an approximation of, you know, the old standby, you'd want to go longer. But if you want this to be the new hotness, then Ooh. you should go less. Go six minutes. I don't know. Somewhere in the middle. Yeah, I think we'll call it. We'll look at it at, at five. And Did we'll you even look at the timer when you put them in? 43. We'll call it 43. <laughs> um, so this is starting. I mean. I just want to show you this because look. Yeah, that looks like cream mushroom soup. It's already starting to yeah, cream to thicken up. I think it we want it to go a little thicker and then so we're just let it go. It didn't really come up to a boil, but um, heat activated, it's probably doing its it's doing its thing here. Um, what do you want? I don't know. I wanted the spider, but I don't necessarily need the spider. I have I we we bought these, we bought these things. I, they're like... Kong, Ikea? Probably. No, Joseph Joseph. Are uh, they from Ikea? Ikea, I'm pretty sure, yeah. No. Designed by Morph. Designed, registered. Josephjoseph.com. I bet you got these at a thrift store. No. Where would we have gotten these? Ikea, I'm telling you. Well... Usually IKEA brands are stuff. It's true. Hot, that is hot, hot boiling water. Do not do what I just did and stick your finger in a little bit. Uh, the, why do we blanch things? Uh, because we want to cook them, but we also want to retain that beautiful, vibrant green bean. This says we got them at Amazon. Oh, well, we got them Joseph, at Amazon. Joseph, Joseph, go eat on Amazon. Okay, well. 
I mean, I could see why we got them. I don't know if we've ever used them for anything. Well, let's try today. Yeah. I mean, I got to throw them into a, into a colander anyways, but this will allow me to stir them up a little bit, so. Like a plastic spider. Yeah. This would be good for single pasta servings. If you've got a water going, you can just stick it in there and pull it out. And... Not stringy pasta, but uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, macaroni. Yeah. Macaroni. He stuck a feather in his hat and he called it macaroni. I don't understand. That was an insult. In the olden times, calling you macaroni was an insult. Maybe we should bring that Don't back. talk with the ice in your mouth like that, you weirdo. That's what we should come back, call back. Hey, what's up, you piece of macaroni? It sounds so innocuous. It's like how uh, we were, uh, we were- But it probably had, like, it's probably like- uh, No, it was like the founding like the, fathers talking about- uh, Italian? No, English, the English. Cause it, it was what? fancy. I did, look it up. I'm not making it up. Uh, but we were, okay, we you were, need a fact checker. You we know were, that? That's why I have you. And I have the whole audience out there to fact check me and put it in the comments if I'm right or wrong. But, uh, when we were camping this last couple of weekends, um, we, we, we take the dirty dishes that we have and we just put them in a garbage bag. <laughs> and at one point in the evening, somebody said, go put that in the dish bag. And it's, it's like a clean <laughs> thing that sounds dirty. And it was, we couldn't stop laughing at it. So. I You're think. right. What? Uh, as a man who exceeded the ordinary bounds of fashion oh. in terms of clothing, fastidious eating, and gambling. All right, see? A fashionable fellow who dressed and even spoke in an outlandishly affected manner. Well, that's crazy. Hmm. Yeah, but the colonists called the, the British that, so. Wait a minute. Am I wrong? It was also a synonym for cool. No. Yeah, it says right here in the Urban Dictionary. We don't believe the Urban Dictionary. Oh, the Urban Dictionary? When was it? When, <laughs> was, when was, I'd like to get a reference on when the ma when macaroni was used as somebody who was cool. What's up, macaroni? Yeah. Fred Claus, the kid named his dog macaroni. Right. Is that you, macaroni? What? What? I'm not even reading this. This is ridiculous. Okay. Is that from the Urban Dictionary? Yeah. Well, that's why you shouldn't read it. All right. Let's just look at this while those are getting ready. They're doing their boiling, and we'll, we'll probably have to come back to that. But look at look at that. Oh, look how that thickened up. Oh, nice. That is. Should we that's just take good too? Yeah. Should I take a little taste of this? Just out of yes. Home? I can smell the wine in it, and I typically don't like where you can taste that. But I think when it gets all mixed together, you're not gonna be able to really taste it. All right. Make sure you get all the mushroom. Come on, mushroom. Oh yeah. I think maybe it's gonna be hot, so be careful. Thank you. I did not add salt and pepper to this yet, but we will taste it and we'll see what you think. I kind of wanted to wait till the end. Well, well, that's good. That's really good. Now you make cream of mushroom soup like for us just right. as an entree. So how does this compare to that recipe? Um, similar onions. There is thyme in there, there's butter, there's mushrooms, there's chicken broth, there's no wine. This is good and it coats the spoon. Mm -hmm. And this is thicker. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, I would effectively eat this with a piece of nice buttery bread. Yeah. And like, have myself a, a real nice evening. <laughs> so, this is starting to... I don't taste the wine that much. I don't either. I actually smell it more than I taste it. So that actually is good. Um, I don't... These have been going for seven minutes. But yep. Oh, look. They got brighter. They did. That is blanching in a nutshell. This is done in a nutshell. Help me. I got it in a nutshell. How did I get into this? It's over there. Way over there. 
It's like, it's real weird. We're, we've got the day off tomorrow. We're going to wine country. And so we're get we're a little bit giddy about that. So get these out of the water. Okay. Oh, no. escapee. Out of the pool. Yeah, he's in there now. Immediately get approximation of cold water on the boots. <laughs> To you, stop them cooking? Yep, that's what we're doing. We're basically stopping the cooking process so that they don't overcook. Can you see me? Yeah, you're on the hairy edge, but we can see you. Oh. There we go. That's better. So, these are hot, so be careful. But I'm just kind of giving them a good top hot. That's really hot. Make sure you... Well, you have all these tools around you. I know, but... You use one of them. It's not really... How do they feel as far as firmness? They were firm. Now they got some. Okay. They got some bend, but they're not falling apart. Right where I think we want them to be. Um, if you want, if if the vegetable is like the part of the star of the dish, then you want to blanch them and really make them like shine. Uh, what are some other things that we blanch normally? I don't remember. I haven't blanched anything in a while. Oh, like yeah, if you were doing like um, Brussels sprouts or I don't know. Look it up. I don't know. It's not something we do very often. I know it's like for I, you and I. Honestly, I think it's like green beans and things like that. It's like if there's a second part of the cooking, you kind of blanch it and then again, it gives it color. Like. Now that these are cooked, I could probably let these drain a little bit, get in some, toss them in some oil, put them underneath a high flame to cook them up, like to cook them a little bit more and get them super hot. And then they look really great. So, I mean, maybe that's what we want to do here. Okay, so I just want to check a few things here. Uh, oh, wow, we're ready to go. Are you ready? Here we go. So we need a bowl. Can you just put it in, back in that pot? This pot? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. I like it. That way we're going to it. So, I'm just going to get as much of the excess water as I can. Oh, yeah. This is going to this is gonna look so good. <laughs> Wait. Um, <clears throat> now we're going to take one cup and one third of fried onions. We know what that looks like. Because <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna really pack that in there. Don't worry, the rest of it's gonna go on top. So okay. that goes in there. You probably could have just done like two handfuls. Yeah. And oh come on, let go let go. It's like a on your ring. Oh, uh, you're silly. And all of that, oh my god. Gosh, wouldn't it have been awesome if you had turned that towards us and we would have seen that going in there? You know when you do something and you immediately regret doing it the way you did it? <laughs> well, that's what that is. The back of that pan was real fancy. No. <laughs> I'm committed to it now. It's like a secret. Can't look at it until I mix it all together. Oh, all right. Um, spoon. Why a spoon, cousin? And then mix it all together. What are you gonna bake it in? A nine by thirteen baking dish. Do you have one out? I don't. Could you do that for me? Well, I can try. Sure. Should be, I think the brown one is down there. Nope, the brown one's in the dishwasher. Is it clean? Nope. Oh, damn it. Well, we can't, we can't let them all around here. We do, we do our best, but. These are your choices. Which it, one would you like? Uh, the, the clear one. The big one, clear one on the side. Of course. Well, I'm sorry. The one that's under everything? Well, I didn't put it in there.
Now I'm gonna I'm gonna keep my trusty dusty real thin spatula around because when I throw it into this nine by thirteen pan, which we don't have to grease, we don't have to do anything. Um, well, that was an adventure. Let's give it a little wipe down here. Well, I was trying to be quiet too. Oh well, you did you did a hell of a job. Thanks. There you go. Look at Ooh, that. Ooh, that looks delish. Look at that. Oh yeah, had ice cream beans. Green beans just want to go everywhere. Again, do yeah, not man. let any of that sauce go to waste. You worked so hard on making it. It'd be a shame if that stuff sat in there and you had to use a piece of bread and really get it out later. <laughs> that's the piggy in me. But, I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you. It looks like green bean casserole to me. Yeah. It looks smells good. good. Um, each component of itself tastes good. So, I'm gonna wager that it's gonna taste real good. I think the difference that you're probably already noticing is the amount of sauce that's in here versus like your traditional. There's a lot, the bean to sauce ratio is higher. But I also think- But that doesn't mean that the flavor's not gonna be there. No, and I think that with, there's a ton of mushrooms in here and everything and the sauce is gonna, is coated everything. So it's gonna taste real good. I preheated it up to 350, magic 350. We cook everything at 350 here. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna bake this for 25 minutes. And then you're gonna put these other yum yeah. yums on there? Okay. And then five minutes, they're gonna crisp up, get delicious. It's gonna be amazing. So we're gonna cook this for 25 minutes. When we get to the five minute mark, we'll 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 pull it out and go from there. Okay, so I went ahead and pulled it out and you can see it's starting to really mesh and I put the crispies on top. And so with the oven at 350, it's really, they're gonna crisp up a little bit more and it's just gonna really come together in the end. So we got about five more minutes and then we're gonna taste this bad boy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're done. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, I'm not gonna lie to you. If that doesn't, look like some of the best you ever do and it's since it's our house i can see a cat hair in there so <laughs> it's like really you really know it's good it's a little cat hair we got it maybe anyways you don't have to worry about cat hair maybe you do maybe you have more cats than i do but i think it looks beautiful what do you think yeah looks really good i think like i don't know i just like i just like the look of it it's so pretty so let's uh Where's your fork? Let's get you a nice bite. This is gonna be warm, so. You're gonna have a, a, the nice, whoops. Maybe a spoon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to get, oh. I think that that's, whoops. Green bean down. It's gonna be hot, hot. It is, so be careful. Oh, I can hear the, has some tooth. Yeah, it's good. Oh. Get a little bite here myself. Oh yeah. I like that quite a bit. Yeah. The good thing about this is everything is everything fresh. is fresh. You, it's yeah. like the mushrooms really come through. The green beans are the flavor is just like outstanding. The 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 onions. It's just you got to make this. Yeah. I think even if you if you wanted to go with the old standby for Thanksgiving, and you it, it, you think to yourself, okay, this seems involved. Make it later when you've got a little bit more time, a little less pressure. I, I think you'll be you'll you'll think about it and get this into your staple or your stable of like Thanksgiving sides. I might give it like I would salt and pepper it when it hit the plate a little bit, but otherwise I think the seasoning is really good. I also think maybe 
before you put the onions on the top, I would have stirred it in the pan. I did. that sauce did? I did. Oh, you did? I did. Oh. Sorry. I, I didn't see you do that. Yeah, I did, I did it before we turned the camera on, and then I realized, oh, um, but I stirred it in the pan. I'm gonna have another bite. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Mm. That, that mushroom sauce is so good. So, I also like that it's not just, the green beans are not just like kind of mush at this point. Yeah. The different textures that you've got of the crunchiness, you've got the soft mushrooms and the vegetables and the mushroom cream sauce, and then you've got a little bit of bite to the green beans. It really makes it, I think this is one of the best, one of the best dishes we've made so far. So. It looks a lot more appetizing. I think so. I mean, you set this down. I mean, I love the colors and everything. It's just, it's great. Yeah. So Scott, thanks for the recipe. Um, I will, I have the recipe. He wrote it down and sent it to me. So I'll make sure that when we get this posted, we will, um, we'll have that set up and you can just make it right away. Um, that's cool. We did Good it. Job. I, I think this will be episode 22. We did 20, maybe 22 was last week. Maybe this is 23. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, but we'll get it up. I'm going to work on the get it all edited tonight and try and get it up and ready for Saturday. Um, it's Halloween on Saturday. We, like I said, we will be in the Napa and Sonoma Valley. It's staying in Santa Rosa and having a good time drinking some wine. But um, thank you all for coming again to another episode of Side Dish and we will um, we'll see you next time and uh, don't forget to uh, be kind, be loyal and do something nice for somebody this week.